Good day, and welcome to SNN Network Summer Virtual Event. Our next presenting company is Lexagene. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to your host, Jack Regan, CEO and founder of Lexagene. Jack Regan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kat, and thank you all for tuning in. So today I'm going to talk to you about Lexagene and introduce automated passage detection and how we ultimately anticipate change in the world. So next slide here is our disclaimer slide. If you want to read lists, I uh, encourage you to go to our website and download our investor presentation slide deck. So on to the third slide here, Lexagene. We are located just north of Boston. We have 45 employees. Our commercial system is called the MyQ Lab. It is a patented, rapid, fully automated passage detection system for point of need usage. We have just started commercial sales. We are also pursuing FDA EUA for COVID-19 testing. If you're curious about the word lectogene, the etymology is such that lexa has a Greek uh, root to it. It means the defender of humankind. And gene is what we detect. We are a genomics company, combine the two, and you get lectogene. So going into the marketplace and the technology. So our system is a little bit unique in the sense that we can very rapidly address different market verticals because we believe we have a manufacturing advantage, which I can go into in a later slide. Right now, if you look at our system, it is a benchtop system. It is shown up there in the upper right-hand corner. We have the set of consumables, including the packaging uh, that those consumables come in. It is a razor blade business model. Those are the razors that you see there on the deck. It provides answers in two hours, and the markets we are targeting are listed below. Right now, our primary market is veterinary diagnostics. It's a $4 billion, growing to be a $4 billion market with the pandemic. It's been expanding uh, very fast. These two markets in the middle we categorize as open access markets. Open access is one of the unique features of our platform. It allows for us to effectively develop, foster, if you will, customers who have unique testing needs and provide them a solution as we develop more validated content for these particular sectors. We lock down an assay panel. We push that assay panel to contract manufacturing, and then it is no longer considered open access. So open access is, in many ways, sort of code for custom testing, at which point we're still developing the market. Right now, biologics manufacturing is a promising sector for us because we've sold a system into that space. Also, food safety testing is an area where we think we can provide a lot of value as well. Of course, human clinical diagnostics is sort of like the golden ring uh, that you know, many diagnostic companies strive for. We are striving for that golden ring. Uh, we were founded in 2016. We've just launched our first product. As we're launching this product, we're also trying to meet the requirements of the FDA. And I can speak about that later on if you, if you so desire. So next slide here, looking at our technology highlights. We believe we, and we've proven that we can deliver very, very high quality test results to the point of need. The point of need encompasses both point of care uh, settings as well as places where you might test for non-clinical purposes. So we provide a sample to answer technology. You place a sample in, you get an answer out in two hours. This is a vast improvement in time versus the three to five days, which is standard for many industries when they're sending their samples off to a reference lab to get cultured. Right now we're in an era where time is money, time influences business decisions. People are willing to spend more money to get a, an accurate answer faster. Our system is open access and highly multiplexed. We sell both validated tests. This falls into the applied markets when our validated tests are being manufactured by contract manufacturers. We also support our customers, as I said earlier, through open access, where effectively our R&D department is providing them test materials so they can get up and running as we develop a fully val validated panel, confirm that there's wider need for the same panel. Once there is, we ship that off to contract manufacturing and apply a part number to it. Uh, we have excellent quality data com comparable to reference lab 
data. So looking at our first primary market, this company, GAN, was founded before coronavirus. People often, you know, forget about the history here, but founded in 2016. Our desire was to hit some of these markets which we feel have great potential and are underserved, effectively meaning that there's really no significant competition for in-clinic infectious disease testing. Looking at the market, we have 32,000 veterinary hospitals in the United States. 18,000 of those have five or more staff, and then we have 2,800, which are specifically emergency critical care hospitals. These are the hospitals that really have the amenities, if you will, of a human hospital. They have surgical wards, often MRI machines, x-ray machines, you name it. They're fully staffed 24-7. They house animals overnight. They really pride themselves in offering that specialty care. It is these hospitals which we believe to be a no-brainer to be adopting electrogen technology. Of these 2,800, I certainly hope that a significant percentage of those are adopting our technology in the next two years. So on to the next slide here, the load. So a little bit more into the veterinary diagnostic space and what we offer for the veterinarian. Again, it results in two hours versus days. They are used to, to empiric diagnosis and prescribing a therapy without really truly knowing what's going on. Imagine the veterinarian now has the ability to say, listen, two hours, I'm gonna know what's causing the infection and importantly, how best to treat it. We're in an era where antimicrobial resistant pathogens are becoming more and more prevalent. As a result, the frequency of pets coming in that need to have their antibiotic change due to resistance is increasing and it's contributing to a higher cost of care. It's contributing to obviously pet suffering and, and uh, owner anxiety and obviously hitting their pocketbook hard. So we come in with an option that allows the veterinarian to say, listen, we're gonna do a quick test. We're gonna do evidence-based treatment and you're gonna get confidence that you're getting the right therapeutic for your particular infected animal. And there's you know, wide uh, enthusiasm for this uh, type of technology in the veterinary space. The market, as I said, the $4 billion market, that is really due to the fact that we have 114 million households that have a dog or a cat, 23 million households adopted pets during COVID-19. So this is a rapidly growing market. Now looking at some of our early data off of the MyQ lab, you know, we do syndromic testing. Syndromic testing basically means that the symptoms uh, could be caused by, multi or the signs, I should say, should, could be caused by multiple pathogens. And as a result, it's harder to diagnose. And, and we do multiplex testing. We've done a lot of looking at, looking at urine samples. Uh, and we have excellent, excellent data. Our correlation to culture in regards to quantitative measurements is 0.95. Basically what that means is that if you are interested in knowing how much bacteria is there, we are effectively spot on with culture. If you look at our ability to detect the pathogens causing urinary tract infections, we're effectively spot on with culture. Again, this is us trying to bring that reference lab quality test, which is literally a five days, sometimes even more longer, but now into the clinic where a healthcare provider, a veterinarian can make informed patient care decisions. So the top reasons to visit a vet. If you look at all the reasons for visiting a veterinarian, over 56% of all canine and feline visits are due to potentially a matter that is caused by an infectious agent. The reasons for canine and feline are listed here. You know, stomach is a primary issue. After that, we have skin and ear for the dogs and, and urinary tract infections and skin infections for the cats. Right now, in 2021, there's been $32 billion spent on vet care and product sales. And if you are a pet owner, you know this probably all too well, the cost of owning an animal is not insignificant. It is right now estimated in the United States to be between $650 to $2,000 for a dog and a little bit over 600 bucks for a cat. Looking at our value prop again, time, 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 time. And so time matters, especially when you're dealing with an infectious disease. Uh, also, you know, knowing how best to treat. 
This is sort of a, a graphic representation of what happens when you send a sample off to a reference lab. And here in the middle, where you have the red dots representing where the patient sample is collected, is collected, shipped to a reference lab, they put it on a Petri dish, they have to wait at least 24 hours, they often have to subculture it, then they have to do antibiotic susceptibility testing, and then finally they have to get those data and report a result. It takes about five days on average. Meanwhile, that animal could be suffering and experiencing complications if they're not on the right therapeutic, or they could be unnecessarily being prescribed a drug when, in fact, the cause of the symptoms are entirely separate from an infectious agent. So our goal is now to bring the MyQ lab, again, a benchtop instrument, into the veterinary hospital, get those answers in two hours. You're not changing a prescription. You're giving very directed care and, importantly, evidence-based treatment rather than a best-guess treatment. So looking at early adopters, we just really started selling our technology. We've sold four systems into hospitals uh, in the United States. We expect this to drastically ramp up uh, in, in the fall as in-person conferences are, are coming back, uh, thankfully. We are attending three veterinary conferences this September, one in Vegas, one in Nashville, and, and one in San Antonio. We're very excited about these conferences. And, and we do expect good things out of them. I also down below here have a multinational biologics corporation sale that was actually our first sale. We are very intrigued by this market and we are developing this market. Um, off to the right here, you'll see two quotes. Uh, the latter quote, it's long and I expect you to read it right now, but it's from Dr. Pierce. I would encourage you to visit our website. You can view a testimonial from Dr. Pierce who is a user of our technology see his enthusiasm for, you know, what the technology does and what it means to his veterinarians and his practice, and importantly, the pet owner. We will be, as the year goes by, we'll be, you know, obviously posting more sales, we anticipate, posting more testimonials. This all will help drive sales as we enter this market. So this slide, it's a new slide for us. This is really to educate uh, regarding the biopharma sector that right now currently is being serviced within our open access department in the company. Biopharma is, uh, you know, commonly known for the sector of the pharmaceutical industry that manufactures biologics. Biologics are things like monoclonal antibodies, gene therapy vectors, recombinant proteins, and vaccines. These are the things that are grown, importantly, keyword grown, in a high nutrient-rich environment and because of that, they're particularly susceptible to becoming contaminated. That contamination is called a bioburden. And there are bioburden testing limits that are assigned based uh, on recommendations from Pharmacopia, which says, listen, you can only sell a product that's this much of a particular um, you, you know, contaminant. And that is for the safety of the consumer, so to speak, the, the person receiving the biologic. Right now, this market is $700 million. It is growing very rapidly. It's an area where they are now doing more and more testing. What they're testing is the raw material, the in-process testing uh, as they're scaling up uh, the size of the bioreactor, the final product, as well as environmental testing to make sure that their plant is clean. Things that they're looking for, again, many of these things sometimes can cause human illness, but often do not. You know, mycoplasma implicated in causing human illness is a big, big concern. It is something that is very widespread, very hard to detect. It contaminates an estimated 15 to 80 percent of cultures worldwide, and this impacts the culture's ability to produce a desired product. And again, of course, it's a health risk as well. The current testing recommended protocol by Pharmacopeia is a 28-day protocol. The market for this alone is expected to exceed a billion dollars globally by 2025. Uh, QD bacterium, acne, this is what causes acne. Uh, it, it often, you know, people working in these facilities can unintentionally contaminate a culture. It takes 14 days to culture. So if you go to a contract manufacturer and say, listen, we have a test that can return results in two hours, they're very excited about this, the fact that it's automated. 
So we have issued press releases on both of these. Uh, we have our current customer using them. We are in constant communication with this customer, really looking to expand the panel. Off to the right here, I have some other common culprits that are bacteria, viruses, fungi, that can cause contaminations in their facilities that they want to test for, not only want to, but are required to test for, for particular products. And so they are looking to streamline their testing, to have it all done at once, to get away from culture, where culture requires specific culture conditions for each target, uh, and instead to rely on genomic amplification, which is extremely sensitive. The uh, pathogens, not pathogens, the contaminants that have asterisks next to them are tests that we've already developed uh, at Lexagene, and we are working to, if you will, complete a panel, which we think we're going to lock down and, and push off to contract manufacturing. At that point, we have a, a true product to sell, and it's easier for our sales staff to go in and, and pitch the technology to potential uh, customers. In this market, um, it's not just the, the pharmaceutical companies. You have life science companies. You have universities. Again, when you think about open access, think about our system being the first that allows for a customer who routinely does PCR to now automate it. And, and there's a lot of PCR being done in the world that's custom. Uh, and our system is effectively a genetic analyzer. It is microfluidic. It easily accepts reagents that the customer provides themselves if they so choose. And because of this feature and the fact that we sort of have a manufacturing advantage for providing tests at a very low cost to potential customers who want to test the technology it allows for us to dibble dabble, if you will, and, and, and provide a solution for water quality testing, agricultural testing. This is often forgotten how much damage some non-human pathogens, I'll say, for instance, botrytis, which is a, a fungus, it causes billions of dollars per year in lost product, largely, you know, destroying, you know, grape crops, strawberry crops, and cannabis crops. Um, so for us, we've demonstrated before we can easily detect botrytis. So as we go out onto the market, we're going to be tapping these different industries, including bio threats. We have a press release recently about bio threats. And ultimately, you know, even though ironically here we are in a pandemic, this technology is ideally suited to helping, you know, stop the no a novel pathogen from spreading if you have systems in the field and you can rapidly configure it using it the open using the open access feature to detect a new strain, such as the Delta variant or the, uh, the Lambda variant, et cetera. The Delta right now is obviously the, the, the horses out of the barn, but as new pathogens come up, the idea is getting the system in place, rapidly doing identification, contract tracing, and successful containment. So on to the company financials. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a recurring revenue stream, we have these consumables. There are two features of these consumables which we think are important to mention. One, we separate out the chemistry from the single-use disposable. In the upper right-hand corner here, you'll see a hand holding a, a small cartridge which is being slid into the MyQ lab. That is made up of basically um, a clamshell of plastic with a couple of filters in it and a gasket, very low cost, no chemistry, because there's no chemistry in that, it's very low cost to manufacture, very simple to manufacture. Down below here, we have what we call our assay panel. Those nine little wells at the top of the assay panel hold microcentrifuge vials into which you place PCR tests. These are the tests for, say, you know, E. coli, salmonella, streptococcus, et cetera, that allows the instrument to screen for what you intended to screen for. It's very easy to mix and match those uh, to meet the customer's needs. Importantly, it's low cost to fill those, and it will ultimately uh, allow for us to have, at volume, very uh, favorable profit margins for this technology. And as that last slide said, we can do up to 27 unique tests per sample screen. So again, looking at Lexion here in the share structure, we have almost 120 million shares outstanding, 25 million warrants and options outstanding. Our current valuation is at $55 million. Pardon me. Um, so the team, very proud of the team we have here. We have on the top row, upper management at the company. The bottom row is our board of directors. 
collectively, we have a lot of experience that we are leveraging to make the best decisions possible for this company. The bios of these individuals, as well as the bios of our scientific advisory board are available on our website. I encourage you to, to look into the, the quality of the people that have joined Lexagene. And again, we're leveraging their expertise um, to um, push this company forward as quickly as we can. So our future, right now, the number one thing we're doing, not number one, but the, the important thing to mention here is building brand awareness is e extremely, extremely important. Some of you on the line possibly have been following Lexagene for years. You've been following us as we've developed from an R&D company to one that's supporting you know, manufacturing, marketing, and sales. Um, but for the vast, vast, vast majority, like 99% of veterinarians out there, they have never heard of Lexagene. And so our sales staff, excited to join Lexagene, excited to sell this product, they are going into veterinary hospitals when they can, given the fact that we're in a pandemic getting an appointment, and the number one question out of the veterinarian's mouth is, who is Lexagene? We've never heard of Lexagene. So we are making a big push this fall. We'll be attending three conferences in the veterinary space, as I just mentioned, in September. And we're also doing social media pushing, you know, getting our name out there so that these veterinarians are seen and recognizing the name more frequently. We're doing digital advertising, print advertising, and, of course, lead generation. We're going to be really pushing to get sales in the veterinary diagnostics market this fall, also working to further develop the biopharmaceutical market. This does take a little bit more time, but again, the customer we have in this particular space is excited about our technology. They continue to engage us, which is all good news for Lexagen. We're going to be supporting uh, our current collaborations. We have collaborations with Ethos Discovery as well as UPenn. We're going to be expanding upon these. This fall, we also anticipate hosting KOL panels. We uh, view ourselves as being thought leaders in this space, really informing on advances in, in testing that will impact the veterinary world and other ver market verticals. So we're going to be um, projecting that voice through KOL panels, getting these veterinarians to log on, recognize the brand that Lexington rec represents, and, and really, again, pushing the technology. We're, of course, working on FDA. Um, often underappreciated is the amount of work that goes into getting through the FDA. Um, as way of example, to get software just to be compliant with FDA expectations, to go from an RUO instrument to one that is compliant with the FDA expectations, it's literally a 10 to 11 month process. And so fortunately, we started that back in, in December and, and we're making great progress, nearly done. But that is just getting the software to the point where the FDA is willing now to take a look at the technology. So we're making good progress there. We're also hopefully eventually going to be on NASDAQ. Right now we're a TSX listed company as well as an OTC listed company. So the OTC, it is a barrier for many U.S. investors to participate in owning Lexgene shares. So we do um, anticipate at some point in the future, likely not this year, but hopefully next year, uplisting to the NASDAQ. Last slide here, um, you know, do, really do encourage, this is the first time you've heard of Lexagene, to go to our website and subscribe. We will send you updates as the company advances and hits milestones. And obviously, if you have any questions at all, you know, please email info at lexagene.com. Someone on my team will be sure to try to get back to you in a timely fashion. So with that, I believe I have about five minutes. I will go to the questions, hit refresh here. And so question, what would you say is the primary external catalyst that could lead to a major inflection point for Lexagene? Great question. And so people right now are holding their breath regarding Lexagene because they want to see market adoption. We are very and bullish this market adoption will happen and they are looking for sustained sales going into the fall particularly the end you know the fall and the end of the year so this is going to be big for lectogene if we can start penetrating this market this market is a consolidated market where often it is a corporate account that uh, owns the hospitals if you look at all of the hospitals out there that 2800 hospitals for the most part, I believe like 70% of them are corporate owned where, you know, each hospital reports into headquarters, so to speak, and headquarters is making that decision. And so 
You know, our goal is to, you know, go to corporate headquarters, make multi-unit sales. Because it's a multi-unit sale, it's often a longer uh, process of closing that sale. That is one thing that will be certainly a catalyst for the stock price. Also, recognize that it's not just the hospitals looking at this technology. We're in discussion with even reference labs who uh, often have a need to not do the, the traditional culture-based test, but instead to do a STAT test. STAT is the term used in the medical community for a, a rapid test where there is an urgent need to get that result back, not in four to five days, but instead get it back within 24 hours. So even reference labs are looking at our technology and, and we expect some adoption in the reference lab space. And so I believe that is it for the questions. If there's any more questions, again, uh, please feel free to reach out to Lexigene at info at Follow us on social media. We do have Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And uh, we appreciate your support. So thank you for logging in, and I'll turn it back to Kat. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That does conclude the Lexigene presentation. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines, and have a great day.